Okay, my name is Ernest Umberto Gambaro, more known as Ernie Gambaro. And the last title that I had prior to my retirement, I was the Senior Vice President and General Counsel for Infinite Services Corporation, which was the largest provider of, of data services to large corporations in the world. We had offices in 79 countries, and I have visited all 79 plus about an additional 40 because I've been in 117 countries total during my lifetime. So I have spread the Purdue uh, motto uh, well around the world because inevitably what came up was, where did you go to school? So uh, they were always rather surprised because uh, being a school from the Midwest in the United States, it, it's not a, you know, a household name. But amongst the, the people that understand the field, it's, uh, I always tell them, well, just to keep it in perspective, it's the same school that Neil Armstrong went to. And they say, oh, why didn't you tell me that to begin with? Because I went there too. So, I mean, it's debatable whether he's more famous than I am or not. Yes. You know, I had the opportunity and was accepted at many universities, probably a dozen or more, none of which, as it turned out, I could afford because they wouldn't give you a residence scholarship inclusion. It was just an academic uh, scholarship. Purdue was the only one that gave me a full ride. Basically, I had room and board as well as my academics. And so to me, it was a no-brainer. I was not that familiar with Purdue, to be honest with you, although I'd heard of it, if for no other reason, because I used to play the football pools when I was younger, and they would frequently be on it. Uh, but uh, as it turned out, I, it was more than fulfilled. Any imagination that I'd ever had about the collegiate experience, uh, my, my time there was memorable and still is. In college, as a continuation of one and the other, and you know, they just got through it and then left. But I think the Purdue experience was unique back when I was going there, and I suspect it probably still is because it's a very vibrant intellectual place. Uh, it's a very impressive. Yeah. Well, they, they, they have to be just to get in. I mean, you know, the, uh, this is not one of these places where because your aunt and uncle went, you had an assured Sorry. slot. Forget it. I mean, you've got to have the great average to get in. Otherwise, you'll, you're never going to get in that place. And that's the way it should be. And the competition within the university is phenomenal. Well, one thing that I grew up in, because I was born in 1938 at the end of the Depression, or getting close to the end of the Depression, back then poverty was real. Nowadays, if you're poor, that means you only have three cars and uh, only eight color television sets in the house, but you're still impoverished. Back then, you had nothing. I mean, you were lucky if you had food on the table. And so it was a much different experience growing up. You are grown up with a certain... Uh, concern about your own security because it was not guaranteed like it is now. I mean, I've often said that if you couldn't even starve to death in this country if you wanted to. As you collapsed on the sidewalk, someone would rush you to the hospital and stick an IV in you and you'd wake up the next morning and say, I thought, is, am I in heaven? No, you're actually in the hospital. Damn, I failed again, you know. It, but it's a, it was a whole different world that most people today really don't have much insight to because they weren't alive. But it was a, a day, a, a time of great intellectual ferment, and it was a, a, still a period of, of time in our history where you had to work uh, because that's just the way it was. And uh, the Purdue work ethic, along with my own from my own family, uh, was I think one of the major causes for my success in all endeavors that I tackled later in life. Uh, I had, if I recall correctly, it, I had 160 hours, semester hours, of school jammed in to uh, essentially four years. And when I went to Purdue, it was really an amazing experience because uh, I, for the first time, got to know Midwesterners. And I was fascinated by the stories these kids would tell about getting up at five in the morning to milk cows and then taking a bus to, to school. And I'd sit there saying, man, this is really a weird place. <laughs> but it was an amazing experience. I, I owe much of my life success to Purdue. And I have absolutely 
I'm not bashful about singing the praises of the place because it fit my lifestyle perfectly. Work was demanded. Uh, this was not a place when I was going there where you could slough off and just slide through. That was not a winning strategy because uh, and the course loads were huge. I mean, 20 semester hours in a semester of high-tech courses is not easy. And their attitude was, rather than, than slim it down, they said, well, that's one way of separating the wheat from the chaff. Yeah, well, I was on almost every honorary you can imagine, uh, from Tau Beta Pi, uh, Sigma Alpha Tau, which was the one for the Aero School. And because uh, academics came very easily to me. It's, I've never really had to work at it that hard. I was blessed with a good intellect and a lot of energy, so I tackled a lot of things at once. But Purdue to me was really the beginning of my adult life. The legacy, I think, that I carried forward in my adult life is inexorably linked to Purdue because all the areas that I was involved with basically stemmed from my technological program. And although I drifted uh, far apart from the Aero School, but the Aero School was known even back then as a very difficult engineering program. Uh, we had, I think it was like 35 or 40 semester hours of high-level mathematics. So you, when you came out of that program, you were one of the elite. I think uh, when I, we, the, back then and probably still, you had freshman engineering, and so you didn't elect a major or select a major until you were beginning your sophomore year. I think we had 240 kids that enrolled in the aeronautics program, and three years later, 32 graduated. You have to be intelligent enough to know how you got to where you are. And I honestly feel that but for my experiences at Purdue, had I gone to some other school, I probably would never have gotten uh, the opportunity to do what I did uh, for two reasons. One, the Aero School at Purdue has always been in the forefront. I mean, this is where Neil Armstrong came from and all the rest of this. You know, Amelia Earhart was a student before she went around the world. Uh, she had a, a strong connection to the university. And in fact, one of the things that I will always say about Purdue is that unlike a lot of universities that I've had experience with, the people in the executive offices and also the, the faculty members, they really uh, created bonds with their students. My, my sense of Purdue, when I first got there, that this was the real deal. It was a real community.